Hey guys, my name is Larry Cherry, and I'm coming to y'all today to um, help to open some some insight on programming on a Windows computer, and um, to hopefully help some young developers that are just getting started and um, just trying to get their foot in the door. So I know that when it comes to programming on on Windows, it can be kind of daunting sometimes. Um, a lot of people will recommend programming on things like Linux and Mac but a lot of times you don't have dedicated hardware for that like in the case of Mac um, Apple products in general are fairly expensive and if you're wanting to get an older one normally when, it, when it's reasonably priced you're talking about you're getting something that several years old probably has a processor that's multiple generations old like think of like the MacBook Air that's a great example MacBook Air it they they really haven't done a, a real refresh on that you're not getting the latest and greatest processor um, a lot of the whole our hardware itself is fairly old and the refreshes they do do are just minor refreshes of the existing hardware nothing actually new they just tweak a few things here or there and um, in terms of Linux, Linux is even harder to get dedicated hardware for, ironically enough. You can install Linux on almost any computer. However, the, there's issues regarding driver support sometimes. And getting support for your Linux systems can be still kind of difficult. Because a lot of programmers like to code in Mac to begin with. So... Their, their code will work in Linux systems, and a lot of the internet runs on Linux servers, but they don't necessarily, when they write their tutorials or they're giving you guides on how to use things that they might write, it's not necessarily set up to be platform agnostic. It's not, it's not like you can take the same code all the time and apply it from one operating system to another. And this is especially difficult for Windows, because Windows is just like, it's completely different it's not even unix like it's <laughs> it's dos like <laughs> so you know one thing that you uh that could be really useful though when uh when you're trying to learn on coding on Linux, windows is to learn actually how to actually store useful data from commands not just from the command prompt but your other applications so that's what i'm going to show you with show you with today so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and bring up my uh, command prompt. I'm already navigated to the folder that I'm going to be working out of. So in this folder, we're basically going to be writing a simple batch, batch script to be able to do a couple of things as well as see what happens when we log information to some files. So first things first, you may ask like, okay, well, you're in there, you're in this uh, directory, but how are you going to make a file? Well, making files in Windows is kind of a weird thing. It's kind of a hack more than anything else. So in in uh, Mac and Linux, you have the touch command. And the touch command is awesome. I love touch. You basically can just create a file. It's really easy, simple, and that's all it is to it. You just touch whatever your file name is, give it the right extension you want, and it's created. However, in Windows, we don't have that luxury. So there's a simple hack for that. And uh, I call it a hack because it's it's kind of taking advantage of how files are logged in Windows. It does work really well, though. And I use it all the time whenever I have to make files from command prompt. But let's first, let's go ahead and take a look at our directory. So we can see our directory is empty right now. We don't have anything inside of it. So first things first, I need to make a bat file for actually running running the commands I need for logging. So you do dot greater than symbol. So what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and tell it, it's going to go ahead and make a file to kind of output something to a file. So that's what it's trying to do by this. But since you don't actually have a real command in front, it's not going to actually output anything really to the file. It's just going to create an empty file for you to work with. So that's exactly what we want to do. So in our case, I'm going to create one called logging.bat. So logging.bat. And it's going to fuss about it a little bit, but that's okay. We don't care. 
So if we actually go ahead and look now, we actually have a logging.bat file now. Hooray! Okay, so we have this file. Now let's actually try to do something with it. So I'm going to be using VS Code for this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up VS Code. And we can see now, let's see, perfect. So I have VS Code here. And we can see we have our logging.bat file. It is empty too. Fantastic. So what about next? Okay, well, we need to do something useful with this. So first thing I want to show you all is actually how to log data to a simple file. So we can actually, uh, the equivalent of, of printing to the console in, um, in bat scripting is called the echo command. And you might be familiar with this from, from, uh, from Linux or Mac. It's pretty much the same command. So we can do echo. And then we can say we can echo whatever we want. So in this case, we can say echo hello. Now I'm not going to log this to a uh, to a log file right away, but I want to just show you how this works. So this is just a simple bat file. So if we go in here now, we can actually do logging.bat, run that, and we get our output. Hello world, awesome. Okay, simple enough. Well. Now that we have this, like, okay, how can we do something more useful to this? So we can take actually text and actually output it to a file. So in this case, we'll say logs.txt. Yeah, just like that. So logs.txt, what's going to happen now when I run this is we're going to expect it to log this data to a file called logs.txt. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we rerun that same command. And if you can see from my editor on the right, we actually have a logs.txt file now. And inside there is hello world. Awesome. It works. All right. So important thing to keep in mind when it comes to the single greater sign symbol is what that symbol does is it overwrites a file. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. So if we do this again, Go ahead and navigate back. We get the same thing. Okay, just the same exact thing. I can actually change this to show you. So I can say, "Hello, Bobby," and we can actually run this one more time. And now, if we navigate back to this, I hold on. VS Code will save <laughs> when I click out. So I got to make sure I run this right. So go ahead and just make sure I save this. Oh, it's still running Hello World, that's right. Because I didn't change the right place. Okay. Okay. Cool, so we got Hello Bobby now. Okay. So this is basically going to just overwrite the existing file. Now, this is, is kind of useful if we just want to be able to have a file that we can kind of reuse. And let me show you what happens when, let's go ahead and delete that file. We remove that through recycle button. We got rid of that. So what if we do this? What do you think is going to happen? So we know a single one just creates a file and replaces it with new contents. What about this? Okay. Oh, look, it created a file too. We got logs.txt, awesome. But let's go ahead and do this. Instead of just hello Bobby, I do hello Mike. Run that again. Okay, echo happened. But now we have hello Bobby and hello Mike. So what's happening is it's actually able to append to the file. It's actually adding to the file as we go. So this is really great for if we're actually wanting to log stuff because when we're logging stuff we always want the newest stuff on the bottom that's exactly what we want that's really useful for what we need so it's awesome okay so that's great but we haven't done anything useful yet so how can we make this useful for us as uh, us as programmers well log files are only useful if we can actually log useful information to them so let me go ahead and show you an example. So echoing anything 
will just echo the plain text itself. So that includes even a command like IP config. So if I do IP config, the IP config is the normal command for telling, for exporting some information about your computer. So it will export information about your IP address, things like that. So I can actually go ahead and save that. Now I can go back in here and actually run this again. So what's going to happen is IP config isn't actually going to run. It's just going to output IP config to our text file. And we see IP config is just in there now. It's like, okay, great. Not very useful. Well, how can we fix that? Well, what we can do is get rid of actually, just get rid of echo. And this is something that kind of confused me when I was first learning batch scripting, because I thought echo, you had to have echo to actually output something to the console so it could be logged, but that's not necessarily the case. The double equal sign, not double equal, the double greater than symbol or the single greater than symbol are more than enough to actually put your data to an actual log. So if we actually look at this now, make sure we save this, we can actually run this again and we'll open up our txt file and we can see now we have some information about our computer awesome okay cool so nothing too useful we got like our Wi-Fi we got like our IPv4 our IPv6 not very useful so this is great for like if you're a system administrator though is if you need to like log some information about maybe a, a client's computer this is a, this is always useful. You can be able to you can give them a simple a simple command like hey do IP config greater than greater than log.txt and have them email you that file if you can't remote into their computer and that can uh, help you a lot with some troubleshooting. I've actually had to do that <laughs> do that a few times. <laughs> so okay, this is great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and delete this file now. So now that we have done that, let's actually try to do something useful, like actually useful, useful. So I'm going to be using Python for this next example. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Python file. We're just going to call it logs.py. So logs.py. Awesome. We got this Python file and we're just going to do simple print. And we're going to say, hello world. So what's kind of useful about this? Well, with Python, we're actually able to log a lot of this data to the console, which is pretty cool. So if I wanted to, I could create an application that could be triggered by a batch script and exports that data from, from a, uh, executing a, uh, a Python file to a log file. <laughs> So it was like, wait a second, I can make a bats file that runs a program that logs something to my computer. Yeah, yeah, you can. It's actually kind of cool. So going back to our logging.bat file, and say, okay, instead of doing IP config, what I'm going to do is Python. So I already have this set up in my path, by the way, python.logs.py. So what is this going to do first of all? So it's going to go ahead and simply just log the log the response from this execution from this command to a log file. That's all it's doing. And the beauty behind this is we can actually really take advantage of this cuz being able to do simple things like just export some data to a log file is going to be really useful. <laughs> so now that I ran that, let's say go ahead and take a look at our logs at txt. We can see hello world. So just like before, that's like actually pretty cool. So now that we have that, it's like, okay, like, can we do a little bit more than that? So let's try to add to this. So you know what, maybe we'll do print one plus, so one plus two. And let's print, let's see, we'll go ahead and just add some more text. We'll say, how are you? Ah. So 
just some simple stuff. So let's go ahead and do it again. What do we get? We get Hello World again, we get three, and we get How Are You. So every single one of those print statements are logged to that log file. That is awesome. Okay, so this really allows us to be able to take advantage of Python in a cool way that you may have not been able to do before. Because you don't actually have to write in your Python script to go create a file and then update a file, append to a file, open a file. You don't have to worry about that. Just let Windows do it for you through the batch files. So super, super, super handy. So now you can get really creative with that and actually use it in interesting ways in your applications. Like maybe you're trying to create a desktop applicating sit, like application of some kind to be able to just log simple data about your computer. Maybe you're like, you know, checking state or anything like that. Maybe checking an existing application, maybe some errors. Maybe you're trying to log information about a web server instance. Maybe you're running a simple web server from a Windows computer. And you're just wanting to log some log some errors in a useful way where you can actually look at them later. So the the possibilities are <laughs> possibilities are really are endless. So it's um it's definitely really really cool. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was just a tidbit on um, logging with bat files. Uh, I'm thinking about my next um, next one is um maybe about going into services. Um, I know services are like super super handy and uh, being able to control your services from bat files especially as a developer is super handy so yeah i'm thinking about maybe making the next video on that uh, i guess let me know what your thoughts are and uh yeah take care